So we're now going to move on and on to building uh, logistic regression models in uh, SAS and other packages like R, Statistica, SPSS, and so on. We're going to focus more on SAS in uh, these set of videos and then uh, quickly go through other packages as well. Now, the, the steps for building a logistic regression model. At a very high level, these are the steps that we undertake while building a regression model. Uh, needless to say, the first step, even before we do sampling, is to create the data set, uh, code our uh, dependent variable into uh, binary uh, 0 and 1s, then uh, create our independent variable list and create a final data set on which we will do the modeling. The first step that we do after that is uh, uh, we, we do a random sampling of the data set into both training and validation data sets. Uh, we do this so that uh, we can uh, test against overfitting. The idea is that uh, we create the, the model on the training data set, which is a random sample, and then we apply the model on the validation and see how well is our model able to fit uh, the desired uh, dependent variable. So that's the, the objective. So the first step is to sample the data. After that, uh, we start the model creation process. So there are multiple steps in the model creation pr process. Uh, first step that we're going to do is we're going to check for collinearity or correlations amongst the independent variables. Now logistic regression is also a special form of, uh, of regression. So all the assumptions of regression also take clear are, uh, are uh, relevant over here. So we need to make sure none of the variables are collinear. We need to avoid variables which have uh, high outlier values, etc. Once we do the collinearity filtration, we then move on to variable filtration techniques, i.e. which variables are actually significant for our model. This can be done manually using expert knowledge, or you can use various techniques like stepwise, backward, and forward. And finally, we finalize the model that we are going to work on. Once we finalized our model, we move on to the testing part. So we now, we've built a model on the training part. And now we start testing the model on the validation data set. So we create a, so there are lots of uh, tests or statistics that we can generate, which tell us how good or bad the model is. And some of the topics that we will cover are lift charts, capture rates, Lorentz curves, the ROC, Gini uh, statistics, the KS statistics. And finally, we will finalize on a model that we feel is good enough. And the last step is, of course, we go ahead and deploy the model on field. So in the next few videos, we will cover broadly all of these steps. And since this is a training uh, series, we're not going to go too deep into any of these steps. So this is just a familiarization exercise. So let's start off with the first step. The first step is that uh, we need to uh, we need to divide the data into two parts. And we're going to uh, cover all of these steps using an actual data set. The data set that I'm going to be working with is the telecom data set. So we have a telecom churn uh, case study. For this data set, we have about 1,000 observations. And for each of the observation is essentially one subscriber. So what we've got is we've got typical information for the subscribers uh, of a telecom company. We have a mix of demographic variables like, like age, uh, the region they live in, the, uh, the marital status, educational status, and so on, um, gender, etc. And then we have certain behavioral variables, for example, what kind of product they have taken up, uh, what are the uh, what are their charges, how how are they using the product, what's their their average billing, what are the number of uh, lines that are, they are using, and so on. And finally, we have the churn variable, which is a binary variable, whether or not did they churn within the last one month. So. The objective of uh, this case study is that using a mix of both demographic as well as uh, behavioral or uh, uh, transaction variables, we want to build a model which is able to predict whether a customer will churn or not. The ability to be able to predict uh, customer churn is very, very essential for telecom customer or telecom uh, companies. If they build a good model, they can actually try and prevent churning if they know who's going to churn. And once they know who's going to churn, they can try various retention techniques on those customers. So in this data set, I've already imported into SAS. We have about a thousand observations and we have a variety of variables. Some of them are, are numeric variables. Some of them are categoric variables. For example, region, even though it's coded as a number one, two, three, it's not actually a number. It's simply a placeholder. Similarly, education 
tells us the type of education the customer has. It's coded as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but these are not actual numbers. For example, 2 plus 1 does not give us a 3 over here. It's just A, B, C, and D, or high school degree, college, etc., coded as 1, 2, 3, 4. These are actually categoric variables in, in the end. Some of the variables are already coded in a dummy format, so 0 and 1 format. The idea is that if you want to use categoric variables, as covered before in our lecture series, they also have to be converted into dummy coded variables. And we'll cover how to do that in uh, logistic regression automatically. So that said, this is our data set. And uh, let's run uh, the library. Let's check it out. So if I look into my data set, I already have the telecom data set loaded. In case you are a paid subscriber, you should be able to access and uh, use this data set directly. Otherwise, this telecom data set is freely available on the internet. You can download it from there and then import into SAS. Now, some of these variables are actually log transformations. So if you look over here, you have the log transformations of previous variables. Log transformations are are can be helpful but in a lot of cases what I see over here is that the log transformations are in fact not calculable because uh, you have uh, problems of log zeros and so on so though a log transformation may or may not be useful in all cases so in our case study I'm actually going to ignore these variables and work with the others so the first step is that we're going to sample the data. We're going to split the data randomly between training and validation. Uh, and this needs to be a, a simple random sample. So we're going to use a random number generator. A typical split between training and validation can be 50-50, 60-40, 70-30, depending on availability of data and computational power. Typically, we want, uh, uh, we want to have as many rows as possible to build our model on. But sometimes we don't have enough data. So this is a test data. We have only 1,000 observations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 60-40 split. Uh, to do a 60-40 split, what I'm doing is uh, I'm using a simple data set statement in SAS, generating a random number. This random number generates a number between 0 and 1, a decimal number. If that number is less than or equal to 0.6, then output the row into train, else output it into validation. In case you want to do a 50-50 split, you can change this number to 0.5. You want to do a 70-30, you can change this to 0.7. We're going to go ahead with doing a 60-40 split. So let's run this this tear and let's check oh, let's check the log. There we have it. It's it's executed it uh, perfectly. And let's look in the work directory. We should have two data sets created. So we have data set training and validation. It's uh, going to put about 60% into training. So out of 30, uh, out of 1,000 observations, we see about 572. So about 57.2, which which is fine. And validation has about 428 observations. So that's the first step that uh, we've we've just done. We've created our training data set and we've created our validation data sets. Let's move on to the next step.